Good morning and on Sunday the 6th, Advent 2, we're looking at Isaiah 40 verses 1 to 11 and I'm reading from uh, a Jewish translation because of course the Old Testament was originally and still remains um, the Jewish Bible, the Jewish scriptures uh, which we took and then combined them with the early church writings that we know as the New Testament. So this translation is uh, a Jewish translation. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and declare to her that her term of service is over, that her iniquity is expiated, for she has received the hand of the Lord double for her sins. A voice rings out, clear in the desert, a road for the Lord, level in the wilderness, a highway for our God. Let every valley be raised, every hill and mount made low. Let the rugged ground become level and the ridges become a plain. The presence of the Lord shall appear and all flesh as one shall behold, for the Lord himself has spoken. A voice rings out, proclaim. Another asks, what shall I proclaim? All flesh is grass, all its goodness like flowers of the fields. Grass withers, flowers fade when the breath of the Lord blows on them. Indeed, man is but grass. Grass withers, flowers fade. But the word of our God is always fulfilled. Ascend a lofty mountain, O herald of joy to Zion. Raise your voice with power, O herald of joy to Jerusalem. Raise it, have no fear. Announce to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes in might and his arm wins triumph for him. See his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he pastors his flock. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them in his bosom. Gently, he drives the mother sheep. Of course, Isaiah 40 like all of the chapters, goes on further with extraordinarily uh, beautiful uh, poetry. But what we're actually hearing and what you are actually reading in Isaiah 40 is prophecy. Um, they're the first prophecies of second Isaiah. Earlier on in Isaiah, uh, we know of it as first Isaiah. It's earlier on um, in exile. This is later on. These are prophecies for what is to come to God's people who feel trapped in exile, who want to return back to their land, to their promised land. They'd really like to return back to the way things were as they knew, but they know that that's not possible. They've come to the point of realisation that they cannot return to things as they were, but they can return to a new normal. Uh, something that will be recognisable, but also something that will be quite different in some ways. They know this because they know that when they were taken into exile, they left their city, Jerusalem, in ruins. The temple, um, the city, the walls, the gates. Um, they know that they can't go back and it will all be as it was. And they know new people have moved into what they regard as their land, their promised land. So there is no returning to things as they were pre-exile. In the same way, there's no way of returning to things as they were pre-COVID. Um, we will have been through these times that we're going through for such a long period of time, well over a year, by the time a number of people have been vaccinated, well into the summer of next year, that so much will have changed 
and people's perspective will have changed on so many things that we'll need to form a new norm. But before you can form a new norm, you first have to be able to be willing to accept that there is no going back to things as they were. There is no returning to things as you knew them. There needs to be a new norm with elements that are recognisable and elements that are new, very, very new and, and different. Which is why in this start of the first prophecies of Second Isaiah, the Lord starts with comfort, O oh, comfort my people. Because when we have to go through a reality check of, of the realities of what's around us, the realities of what face us, the challenges in life, we need comforting. We need the Lord to wrap his arms around us. We need to be able to wrap our arms around each other. And there are a few people who we may be able to do that with. Many at the moment we can't. And give comfort and receive comfort. That comfort that, that says, I'm with you. I'll walk with you. I will stay with you. I will not leave you. Um, I'm, I'm really passionate about you and your life and your dreams and your worries and your anxieties. I'm really passionate about anything it is you have to say. I'm, I'm passionate about staying and listening and providing comfort. Comfort, oh comfort my people. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and to declare to her that that time is now over. There's an awful lot of destruction in this bit of second Isaiah as this first prophecy begins. I mean, just in terms of, of topography and the lie of the land, valleys being raised up and mountains being made low, that's major restructuring, isn't it? That is massive movement of millions of tons of soil. That's huge plate tectonics. That's on a earthquake, volcanic eruption scale of movement. If you're going to raise a valley and lower a mountain. But the Lord uses such vast, huge uh, language in order to help his people as he's comforting, understand that the things they have known will have changed. They cannot go back to the valleys as they were, the mountains as they were. Much has shifted and is not going back again. And there are some things of that scale that will have changed for us. Some of them we can guess at now, some of them we know, others no clue about. Um, they will unravel next year. Uh, what has significantly changes and the repercussions, the consequences, they will unravel for us and we will see them before us. And then, as always, the only adult choice we have is how we respond to them. Uh, we will have very little control over them. We can just simply uh, respond. Often in Isaiah, there is a voice that says, uh, proclaim something or say something, and then a response. What shall I proclaim? And there's a reminder in this comfort. And we often use these words in a funeral service. Um, the breath of the Lord blows on them. Grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of the Lord is always fulfilled. Um, and we use them in funerals because we're saying, uh, people's lives like grass and withering and flowers fading do fade away and go but the word of the Lord endures forever he's saying it as words of comfort they might not always feel words of comfort but they are he's stating the obvious 
uh, all things fade, all things earthly fade, buildings fade, um, people fade, memories fade. Um, there is nothing earthly that lasts forever. But the Lord who loves us and made us and receives us back into his, his kingdom and comes to earth to live with us and die for us and his word, which is his promise, um, that remains forever. There is something solid to hold on to in the turmoil of life where all fades and all withers eventually. There is something that does not and will never fade. His comfort, his love, his presence, his word, his promises. And although we've not obviously read to the end of the chapter, just verses 1 to 11, there is this beautiful kind of symmetry. It starts the chapter with comfort, comfort, my people speak tenderly to them. And at the end of verse 11, we've got the picture of the shepherd again. And this is the eastern shepherd um, who doesn't drive his flock, but his flock follow him. He, he's in front. But here he is in the midst of his flock and the lambs he's gathering up and gently carrying them. And the mother sheep, but, but actually the Hebrew is the pregnant sheep, the ones who are with child. He gently drives them. He gently moves them on. There is such tenderness in the way the Lord speaks and the way in which the Lord acts with his people. He continues to speak truth to them. He continues to show them the reality of what's around them and says, no, 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 no. We're not going to pretend. We're not going to deal in nonsense. We're not going to make up stuff. We're going to be honest and genuine and authentic and real about the reality of the situation around us and just how challenging it is and just how different it's going to be for you. We're not we're not dealing in nonsense, but we're going to do it tenderly. I'm going to speak to you tenderly. I'm going to um, deal with you tenderly. I'm going to interact with you tenderly. I'm going to comfort you, my people, with the knowledge that I am before you and in front of you and in you. Comfort, comfort my people, O Israel. The Lord comforts and he speaks tenderly and he speaks truth. Happy Advent. God bless.